This is Associate Minister Rudy M. Prowl Sr. On behalf of the Centerville Church of Christ family and our minister and evangelist, Dr. Ralph P. Smith Sr., we would like to welcome you to our worship service. Sing, pray, and shout because we're so happy to praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus lifted me and I'm singing glory and it don't you know that Jesus lifted well I want to say that I'm so glad you know that Jesus lifted me well now I'm so glad you know that Jesus lifted me well now Me and I'm singing glory. I 
something different, to be something different. You know, they say we can't help everybody. That's true. But if you can help those that you need to help, then we will get to everybody. Today's scripture will be coming from Hebrews 11, chapter, verse 7. And it reads, By faith, Noah, after being warned about what was not yet seen, in reverence built an ark to deliver his family. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteous that comes by faith. May God have a blessing on the hearers, readers, and the doers of his word. Thank you. giving us the right heart and the right spirit 
so we can boldly approach your throne. And Father, we come this morning just asking you to just bless this service today. We ask that your spirit just reign supreme, Father. Father, we just ask that we can always be, the, be in the mindset of giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Father, we ask that you just be with us. Be with the man servant who's going to speak your word today, Father. We ask that you just speak for him, speak through him. And Father, that the end result of that, that someone may repent of their sins and be saved. Someone may be restored, Father, because that's why we're here, Father, for the restoration, the reclamation of souls. And Father, we just ask that you continue to be with this church, Father, and this leadership. Father, we just ask that you continue to bless us, Father, that we can be not impersonators, but imitators of Christ. We just ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I didn't hear number two people. All right, then. That's better. That's much, much better. Uh, we're going to switch gears right now. Uh, I'm going to ask my good friend, uh, Brother Thomas Owens, if you would come up and uh, sing whatever he wants to sing. I ain't, uh, only thing I'm going to say, I'm like the temptation. I ain't too proud to beg. All right. So, Tom, whatever you want to do, come on and, and do your thing. Life's a long road, a long, long road with me.
That, hot is, that mic is smoking. All right. Thank you, Brother Owens. Thank you, Brother Owens. That is exactly what we needed. A lot of us is going through some things, and we need Jesus to be our leaning post. We need Jesus to be our brother. We need Jesus to be our friend. Amen. Now, I'm not preaching. I'm just getting you warmed up. Let the Spirit of the Lord come on and rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord come on and rise. Well, let the praise come on and rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. has given. We ought to be rejoicing, be glad and rejoicing in it. It's a real pleasure to be standing here today. I think about what God has done and it is doing. And he has blessed us today to see another day of life. And as I look in the audience, I see someone that I've known for 48 years. Faithful man, godly man, wise man. I'm supposed to be introducing the preacher, but let me... <laughs> Brother Sneed, would you please stand? Let's give him a hand. We go back a long way. Come a long way, baby. God has blessed us and we are both still here. Is that your lovely wife sitting there behind you? Is she here? Let the beautiful sister Sneed stand. Thank you. And members of the Wagner congregation, why don't you stand too? Amen. Let's give them a hand. 
We're grateful for your presence to come over and support this fine man. You may be seated down. Prelude to introducing the man of God who's going to stand here in a few moments and break unto us the bread of life. Brother Cobb asked me to introduce him today. He's running just a little bit behind, but he shall arrive sooner or later. In the meantime, we have the honor of having a fine minister, Brother Christopher Williams, and his lovely wife. Would you stand, Rita? They have six children. And mm. <laughs> and they're sitting here waiting patiently to hear their father as their members and we as the members of the Centerville Church and Logan Street, Venice. We're grateful for this privilege to have him to stand here in just a moment or two to give us words to live by and to die by. So without further ado, I'm, I'm going to sing about leading a song, Charles. I, I, I'm singing about a song. And you know me. At some part, you're going to have to take over. <laughs> Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You know that Jesus is on the main line. You ought to tell him what you want Ooh, Jesus is on the main line tell him what you want well now call him up and tell him what you want yeah what you want well now if you see you can't get away Tell him what you want. Ooh, now if you sick and you can't get well, tell him what you want. Well, now if you sick and you can't get well, tell him what you want. Sisters, ladies and gentlemen, friends, yes, all of you in TV land. Brother Christopher Williams. Chris, do you have a song? Get a note. Next voice you hear. Henry 
Tu vero mafi avanti tu tu e tu vero mafi avanti tu tu e the fly away when the world can't see let me hear all the bass in it come on i want to e tu e tu vero mafi avanti tu e tu e tu vero mafi avanti tu e tu e the fly away when the world soprano soprano tu e I want to weep, to weep, to bell on my feet, to weep, to bell on my feet, to weep, to fly away, and the world can't do me no more. Altos, come on, altos. Two weeks to bell my feet. Uh huh. Two weeks to bell my feet. Two weeks to fly away. Tennis, tennis. Come on, Tennis. Well, two weeks to bear my feet. Where my Tennis at? Two weeks okay. to bear my feet. Oh, yeah. Two weeks to fly away. Oh, and, and the world, world can't Everybody, come on, put it again. Two weeks, two weeks. Two weeks to bear my feet. I want two weeks. dirt is not standing on top of us. God has truly given us one more opportunity to worship him in spirit and in truth. We're not here because we wanted to be here. We're here because God said one more Sunday. I truly want to thank the Centerville congregation and the leadership for giving me this opportunity to stand before you on this day that the Lord has made. I also want to thank Brother Cobb for leaning towards me to be the keynote speaker. In his 39 years of laboring in the vineyard, I'm truly honored, my family is honored, and my church family is honored as well. If you have a copy of the Bible this morning, the book is Hebrews, the chapter is 11, and the verse is 7. And the Bible says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, Moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he commanded the world to become here of the righteousness which is by faith. Consider the topic, Noah, the man of faith. Noah was a man of faith. He remained faithful to God during 
adverse circumstances. His faith was unwavering. He trusted God in the unseenness of his circumstances. Faith is the hope in the impossibilities and difficulties of life. Let us look at the life of Noah. Now we're all going through things in this lifetime. If we lived in a perfect world, we would not need faith and hope. If we lived in a perfect world, we would not need preachers. We don't live in a perfect world, but we serve a God that is perfect. To be faithful, one must be loyal to God. Noah was loyal to God. He did what God wanted him to do. See, this day and time that we live in, we find ourselves doing what we want to do instead of what God has for us to do. And we wonder why we're in these ruts. We wonder why we can't put one foot in front of the other because we're doing things on our own. I heard a man say that God has left us. I said, you're wrong, sir. You have left God. God is always on the throne. He never takes a day off. We the one takes the days off. We the ones that gives ourselves too many breaks take too many vacations and trying to figure out how to get back on track. God is all we have, all we ever needed. The people in Noah's day lived apart from God. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of thoughts of his heart was evil according to Genesis 6, chapter 6, verse 5. People decided to walk in a different direction. God was deep and grieved over the people's sin. Wherever God looked, he saw corruption, violence, departure from his ways. Noah could have walked in the same direction, but Noah chose to follow God. See, we live in a world to where we play this game of call and follow the leader. But following the leader is okay if the leader knows what he's doing. If the leader is following God. See, nowadays we have so-called leaders that are following man. See, man will forsake you. Man will put you in a place where you can't even get out. But the last time I checked, God has made good on all of everything he said he would do. We need to follow God as Noah followed God and what he had to do for him. Faithful people must have a single-minded loyalty. The conjunction, but of Genesis chapter 6, verse 8, introduced a different kind of person. It was Noah. He decided to be faithful with God. His, he was righteousness, blameless, and walked with God. He declared to be faithful. When God, the majority, moved in the other direction, to be faithful, one must obey God's word. Noah obeyed God's word. In Genesis chapter 6, verses 11 through 21, are recorded God's instructions, which must have seemed strange to Noah. God told Noah about the end of the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. 
and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Genesis 6, 13. The Lord told Noah to build an ark. Now, God is giving instructions here. Now, when he told him to build this ark, he didn't say use plywood. He didn't say use pine wood. He didn't say use mahogany wood. He said use gopher wood. See, this day and time, our folk nowadays have a problem following directions and instructions. You know, when you, you buy something from the store and it has to be assembled, some of us take the directions and we look at them this way and this way and then we just throw them down and want to use it our own way, not to realize when we get to a point that we did it our way, it didn't come out right. So now you want to revert back to the instructions. But it might be a little bit too late. See, one thing about Noah, Noah followed God's instructions. He told him to build the ark of gopher wood. Rooms shall thou make in the ark and shall pitch it within, without the pitch, and with the pitch, according to Genesis 6 and 14. Pacific instructions were given about the ark. Furthermore, the Lord instructed Noah to gather two of every species of animal. For the ark, God gives us instructions that we must follow. See, some of us now, as Christian people, and I want to talk about the saved folks. <laughs> and the reason I have to talk about the saved folks, because we are the ones to be setting the example in the world today. Folk are depending on us for the right direction. See, some of us believe that we have that faith the size of a mustard seed. But when that problem comes along, we holler, oh, Lord, why me? But see, God puts us through things to grow us. See, we believe that since we're Christians now that we don't have anything bad to come upon us. But see, if we don't have these things to come upon us, we'll continue to stay on that spiritual milk and never be able to digest that spiritual meat. So when you get ready to use the term, Lord, why me? Ask the Lord, why not me? God has to use somebody. I've chosen to let God use me in every way. What I would have thought 15 or 20 years ago that I would be in the position that I am now. No, I wouldn't. My stepfather, Brother Simon D. Gooden II, was an ordained Church of Christ minister. Simon D. Gooden I was an ordained Church of Christ minister. Every time a church door opened up, my parents made sure that we were there. I went to so many gospel meetings at a young age, and I said, when I get older, I got to take a break. You leave for church on Sunday morning in the daylight and you get back home and it's dark. But I thank God that I had faithful parents that followed God's instructions as Noah did. Because without those instructions and God directing my footsteps, where would I be? The Bible says it's not for man to direct his own footsteps. Many of us try, and many of us lose every time. I stop by to tell you 
Stop trying to direct your footsteps. Be like Noah. Let God direct your footsteps. God expects obedience. That word obedience is something that we all have a problem with from time to time. Even myself, I'm human. That word has often got me in trouble in many and many times. But I had the parents that made sure that they kept that instant act right all the time. <laughs> in spite of the unusual instructions, Noah obeyed. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him to do. Genesis 6, 22. One thing I loved about Noah, Noah followed God. Noah could have went in many other different directions. The world nowadays is so easily distracted. I look at our young people. The least little things knocks them off their square. Have them going in a totally different direction because our parents have stopped being godly. Our parents have let our children raise themselves. And it needs to stop. How does it stop? Is that we go back to the years of my childhood. And I remember being seven, eight years old, going by brother and sister Moore's house. Now we had Wednesday night Bible class on Wednesday. Now take it, now it's Thursday, Brother Jones. Bible class all over again. But see, the proof is in the pudding. See, nobody wants to recognize the unfinished product. Everybody only recognizes the finished product. But to get to that finished product, there's some work that got to be done. And it all starts with God in the homes. A preacher can stand up and preach all day till he's blue in the face. But if things are not going on at home the way they should be going, it's going to be a problem. In the Good and Williams household, I learned that if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. See, many of us are spending too much time trying to get ready. See, in my upbringing, God is great and God is good was an okay verse as a child. But my parents said, okay, you graduated towards that. They gave us Bible verses to research, recite at the table, not having the Bible in front of you, you had to know it. And one thing that I thought was cruel that <laughs> if you didn't know that Bible verse, that plate stayed away. <laughs> but as you can see, I learned those verses very quickly, very quickly. The world has its attractions. Noah was a faithful man. Some Old Testament scholars call him an extraordinary person. In my conclusion, is that it's time for us to follow the instructions and the directions of God as Noah has done. I live by 
change nothing or nothing changes. You can't continue to do the same old things thinking that you're going to get a different result. I tell folk on a daily basis, you got to change people, places, and things to become better. I was often taught that if you want to soar like eagles, you can't run around on the ground with chickens. <laughs> not being judgmental, but Jesus did not die on the cross because he didn't have anything to do that day. Jesus died for a purpose so that we may have life more abundantly. And it's time for us to start taking advantage of it. Our world is not perfect, but we serve a God that sits high and looks low, that is perfect. He said, seek ye first the kingdom, and all things shall be added unto you. All you have to do is ask, and it shall be given. But see, some of us have let pride get in our way. Some of us have gotten bigger than life. So, so big, we can step over folk. The only time you should look down on a person is when you're helping them up. See, when you have God, God will direct your footsteps in the way that you need to go. Do you want to be recognized as a faithful person or an unfaithful person? You should want to be faithful. To be faithful, you need to learn lessons from Noah. Be loyal to God. Obey God's word and resist the world. The book of James tells us that resist the devil and he will flee from you. Some folk make too many excuses why they can't get things together. Some folks say, well, when I get things all straightened out, then I'll accept Jesus Christ. But I stopped by to tell you this morning, church, you'll never get it straightened out by yourself. You're wasting your time spinning your wheels. We're going to leave this place one day. No man knows the hour. But dying is not the problem. It's where do you go after you die? How did you live your earthly life? I heard a man say that living is hard, dying is easy. And I say, well, you, you must don't know anything about the Bible. Because if you die and you ain't right with God, you're going to bust hell wide open. See, some preachers don't like to talk about that hell. They like to always talk about the heaven, the good part. But it's still a bad part if you don't take care of business first. See, you know when you, somebody calls you and you don't want to take that call, you can say, I'm in a meeting. Text me, I can't talk. <laughs> or send an email, I, I'm out of the office this day. But see, when God calls, None of those will ever work anymore. Wherever you at, and it's time, you're going to leave this earth. All that you didn't get done on this earth won't be done on this side. Some folk believe that once you die, it's the end. It's not the end, church. It's the beginning. I encourage you today. If you're not a member of the body of Christ, I ask why not? I ask what are you waiting on? 
Just because we wear wristwatches and time clocks on the wall, we're not on our own time. We're on God's time. So it's time for us to get things in order before we leave this earth. Obeying the gospel is the first step. You've heard the word. Believe what you heard. Repent of your sins and shortcomings. Confess the sweetest name that ever rolled across mortal tongue. Go down in the watery grave of baptism and put on Christ this morning. There's somebody here that needs Jesus Christ. That cross has gotten too heavy to bear. It's time to give it to Jesus this morning. You came in here with baggage. My message is to you. When you leave out of here, make sure the baggage stays here. Don't take the baggage back out with you because the problem still stays. It hasn't given going anywhere. As I like to say, is when we go to the trash can and we throw something away, we don't go back looking for it. The church is a hospital. Church is for sick folk. Church is for folk that's going through things. But we have to learn to give it to Jesus Christ and leave it with him. The last time I checked in Genesis 1 and 1, where it talked about who created what. Man didn't create anything. God created the heavens and the earth. Sometimes we think God needs help. God don't need no help, church. We the ones need to help. You can't help God. Give it to God and let him work the details out. If you're here today and you're going through some things, we serve a God that forgives. He forgives you for anything that you do. to do is ask. If you need prayer this morning, God is always on the main line. He never takes a day off. I'm so thankful to know our Lord and Savior. But I know of some souls out here this morning that need Jesus Christ. And they're ashamed right now. They worried about what the next person is going to say. They worried about if they're going to get kicked out of the friendship click. They worried about what the next person is going to think about things. But you can't worry about what somebody else thinks. Every person is responsible for their own soul and salvation. And if you don't understand that, let me break it down for layman's terms. What you eat... Don't send me to the bathroom and vice versa. So what means is that you need to take care of the business while the blood is running warm in your veins. If you're here today and not a member of the body of Christ, come as we together stand and sing the song of invitation. Show, show me, show me the way. Don't you know that I'm down? 
Sometimes I do wrong, but Lord, you know that I am your child. Don't you know that I'm not here, Lord, and I need your power. Come on. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you the rest that you need. Somebody need rest. Somebody need to cling to the Lord now. Somebody has some pain that need to be removed. Whatever it is, the Lord can fix it. No way. One more time now. He's a 
kind father it's again that we your children come before your throne of grace to receive mercy and grace to help in the time of need we would like to thank you for the spoken word that we heard today and we anticipate the changes that it will make in our lives the lives of our friends and family and our community and all those that heard your word today we ask you to bless us throughout the remainder of this day, throughout the remainder of our life, and throughout eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've come to that part of our service, communion, where we honor the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. John 6 and 51 says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you now to take these symbols that represent your body, in your blood, asking that we do it in a manner that's pleasing to you and enriching to us. We ask that you continue to bless and watch over us. These things that we ask in your son Jesus' name, amen. To tomorrow, tomorrow, because because he lives all. I know. Because he lives, I 
listen. You don't have to cry no more, cause life is All you got to do is put your hand in the hand of the man who stands the water. So, I'm just asking you all today. I'm talking about Brother Nathan Cobb. And uh, I could go on and on and on. I call him Nate. And we have them long conversations on the phone in the parking lot or anywhere else and make no difference. But uh, his persona never changed, and they're going to have a program and honor him this afternoon. But I want to give everybody a chance here right now to take advantage of whatever they can do to serve and uh, show their love for them by taking up an offering uh, after the regular offering that's been taken. And it would be well deserving, and I know God will bless you. And uh, you can't, may not be able to do everything you want to do, but uh, showing that love for them, I know God will be pleased for it. And I will thank you in advance and appreciate it. Hey, thanks, I appreciate it. Before I get into the, uh, the offering, I just got a few, uh, couple things, quick things I need to say about uh, Brother Cobb, too. He's worked 39 years. I worked at Snooks for 37 and a half years, so I didn't come close to what he did. And when I, when I was, I did 20 years at the Snooks in Alton, and one day I was at work, he saw my picture on the back, and he told one office girl's a friend, he's like, hey, I know that guy. Tell him to come up here. <laughs> so I went up there, and it was Brother Cobb. She's like, it's a minister up here. I went up there, and we had a good conversation. And you know, it made me feel real good that he took the time to come up there. You didn't talk to me. And also, I'd like to mention that uh, he married me and my wife 30-plus years ago. <laughs> so I got a lot of respect and admonishment for him. And I appreciate him for all he's done for me. Now, this comes down to the portion of our service where we're asked by God to give back a portion of what he has given to us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, it reads, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now let us pray. We come to you, Father, asking you to bless these funds that they will be used to promote the gospel and upbuild your kingdom. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to have the income that you provide. We thank you for our homes and our families. And if we've done anything contrary to your will, please forgive us. These and all blessings we ask in your precious son Jesus' name. Amen.
See what the Lord has done. Come on and see what the Lord has done. Everybody mm -hmm. ought to count Don't your own. Many, let's see. And see, see what, what the Lord, Lord has done. Everybody see what the Lord, Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord, Lord has done. Everybody mm -hmm. ought to count, count your own. Many, let's oh, see. and see what the Lord has done. And see what the Lord has done. Aren't you glad he put a gift in you and me? See what the Lord has done. So glad he put a gift in you and me. Oh, see what the Lord has done. Everybody ought to count your own. And see what the Lord Thank you once again for worshiping with our church family.
It's our sincerest prayer that you will worship with us again. Have a blessed week. You ought to count them, count them, count them. And see what the Lord. Everybody see what the Lord. Put your hands together, see what the Lord. Lord, everybody ought to count. I count them, count them, count them. Said I count them, count them. Said I count them, count them, count them. Name one by one. I count them, count them. You ought to count them.